Do so with people news without prejudice or recourse. Um, not waiving any of my rights. I'm not an attorney. Uh, so anything I say or do in this video is just uh, opinions only. It's a learning video, y'all. Uh, so take it as such. Alright, so this is Chris. Alright. And... Well, let's listen to what she has to say, alright? Uh, this is going to be outside because it's a little rowdy in the house. So you might hear a little background here and there. But I thought this video was pretty important. Okie dokie. Also in podcast form, uh, in my latest show, I think it's episode 1439 or something like that. And uh, you can go follow up and have a video record of what I'm about to tell you. So what we saw happen this past week in my humble opinion, is nothing less than judicial terrorism. This is uh, also May 7th of the release on the Supreme Court, by the way. All right, so this is, uh, video is going to be later than this one video. So I thought I'd go ahead and let you know. Uh, no, this is what they're what this is particularly talking about The Supreme Court about the early release of the Supreme Court's opinion, maybe All right. The only purpose this is unprecedented Absolutely unprecedented the independence of the judiciary in its proper application of independence relies specifically on the ability of the justices to be able to have discussions amongst themselves about issues with great candor. Sort of what, the, like the convention that created our Constitution was sealed away so that the delegates could have conversation in great candor and they could get down to the crux of the issues and get the right imprecise language together. That's why our justices need to be to do this. And this singular incident could be sown to create a chasm in that trust. Not just simply between the justices themselves, which would be the greatest offense, but um, the people on the system as well. So the case comes to the Supreme Court from the state of Mississippi on a law that the state of Mississippi has passed to give greater protection for life in the womb. The challenge legally was against Roe v. Wade and its subsequent case of Casey. This, is an, this draft release is just that. Alito, writing for the majority court, issues a draft of the final majority opinion to circulate to the other judges so that the majority opinion judges can then issue their own written concurrence and then those who don't vote with the court can issue their dissent. And then the final opinion will be released with the majority opinion and any concurrence from a separate judge or any dissent. This is, like I said, judicial terrorism. The purpose is at least on the surface, to manipulate the court, and it will fail in that aspect. Because you see, the court cannot come off this opinion now. And the irony is, even through the process, if they were going to change that opinion, which happens in small degrees sometimes, they can't. Now that it's been released, because any modification of this opinion will be viewed as a weakness in the judges, in the system, which will sow a distrust in the entire judicial system. And the court cannot allow that to happen. The other purpose of this opinion, which I think is the primary purpose, is not just judicial terrorism, but political terrorism. The purpose 
this in releasing this draft opinion is to weaponize a political base to drive people to the polls for midterm. I believe that will also fail. First and foremost, it will fail if we are successful in teaching the truth about this opinion. Second, it will fail because people have a woefully short political attention span. The fervor you see now will wane before October. And there will be some other crisis that will have to be invented. That's why you get this whole, uh, this whole phenomenon called the October surprise. If they were really going to be effective with this judicial political terrorism, they would have held off till October. Then it would have been effective. Then it would have been effective. Unless, of course, there is an underlying process of sowing distrust in the court, making one of the Supreme Court justices a, a scapegoat, driving the impeachment of a judge, so that the midterms will be people coming out who will then have the, you have to come out and vote because now we have an opportunity to appoint a new justice. The secondary argument could be, this is why we need to add justices to the court, the court packing directive. Now, I believe this will fail if we are responsible in, in teaching what really happens with this opinion because the le radical left agenda is showing hysteria that is not based in fact. The very words overturn Roe evoke an inappropriate emotion when you really understand what that means to overturn Roe. Because the radical leftists are out there screaming that this opinion will outlaw abortion. That's their narrative. It does not. This opinion does not outlaw abortion. What this opinion does in overturning Roe is it establishes that the cases Roe and Casey were built on an inappropriate use of the 14th Amendment. So our courts have used the 14th Amendment to recognize constitutional protection for rights that are not enumerated in the Bill of Rights. Now the Ninth Amendment in the Constitution tells us that there are other rights that belong to the people that are not enumerated. And our courts have used the 14th Amendment to take other rights and designate constitutional protection. For example, parental rights are not specifically enumerated in the Bill of Rights. And I will tell you from an historical application, our founders would have never felt the need to incorporate parental rights in the Bill of Rights because it was automatically understood. Now, understanding that... And then we go again, y'all. The Supreme Court, by, on purpose, has been ignoring the Ninth Amendment. Because it does give too much power. And they got to create laws to cover up the whole for the benefit of the 
uh, government. Uh, that's the reason why these civil laws are around instead of common law. That's to fill in the holes to take your rights away. But is understanding the proper use of the 14th Amendment to take unenumerated rights and give them constitutional protection. So the 14th Amendment standard has been, since its ratification, that if a right is not enumerated in the Bill of Rights, it must have a long, and I mean long-standing, historical, cultural, legal recognition as an inherent right of the people. Like parental rights. Like the liberty of travel. Alito accurately... They are 100% ignoring the Ninth Amendment and family court. Period. ...points out that abortion fails that test. Because abortion does not have a long-standing, historical, social, and legal history of being a recognized, essential, inherent right. Alito points out in this opinion that the right to abortion was really an invention of Roe. So you cannot take an invention and automatically make it have constitutional protection. In the fact, this is the second thing now, in the fact that Roe and Casey fail that 14th Amendment constitutional test, the 10th Amendment now kicks in. The powers not delegated by the proposed, oh well that's, that's actually James Madison, the powers that are not delegated to the federal government are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. So because we cannot apply the 14th Amendment to create a constitutionally protected right to abortion, that issue now falls to the states. So when they say overturn Roe, they're not saying abortion is illegal. They're saying abortion is not federal. That's the significance of overturning Roe in this application. Now, the people who understand this, this is why they drive the false narrative of it outlaws abortion and it freaks so they can freak the people out to come against it because the real threat is the fact that the court has specifically and accurately outlined the proper application of the 14th Amendment when it comes to state versus federal issues, which now creates a crack pastor to come back and review a whole lot of past opinions on state versus federal. That's the real threat. That is the real threat. So what we need to do is we need to be successful in teaching people what overturning Roe actually means. Because in reality, this is where the new fight comes. Because returning it back to the states means legalizing abortion or making abortion illegal is now a state-by-state -state issue. And that's the new battleground. That is a new battleground. Because you see, overturning Roe in this application doesn't change anything for the state of Massachusetts, which has vast and extensive pro-abortion state legislation. So the battleground... Well, and it goes further than that, y'all. All right? Uh, even when they do this uh, with Wade, uh, it creates more power back to the state with other cases. Okay? Uh, so, doing that in generally is uh, there's going to be a lot of cases going to have to be relooked at. Um, and let me give you this also, y'all. 
the reason why the Supreme Court will never pick up the 14th Amendment because they know it was illegally ratified. And uh, one of the judges said at one time, says, if the Supreme Court's picked this up and say it was illegally ratified, which is what smaller courts have said, that it would throw our judicial system in chaos because of so many things by the 14th Amendment was acted in unlawful order. And Massachusetts is now to change the state legislation, change the culture of the people to make pro-life legislation. And I'll end, Pastor, by pointing everybody to my website, chrisannhall.com. I have an article, quite interestingly, written several years ago, and now the Supreme Court's finally caught up with me, called The Inalienable Right to Life. It points out why Roe and Casey, just as Alito did, is not constitutional. But it also shows why it is contrary to the state constitutions to legalize abortion. And that's the new battleground. By the way, as a little bonus for your educational dollar, as one of my law professors used to say, the overturning the judicial nullification of Roe and Casey ought to now make our conservative red states freer to make stronger pro-life opinions or uh, uh, legislation because the rhinos will no longer be able to say, well, we'd like to do more, but row. So now you can call them out on their political hypocrisy because here's the bottom line. The big question has always been, why don't our, our right-sided red states make better pro-life legislation? Here's the dirty little secret. Because if they make stronger pro-life legislation, they won't be able to campaign fundraise for pro-life issues. And Alito has just swept out from underneath them any excuse they might have from a federal level. Which means you've got to keep your eyes open for misinformation and disinformation coming from the Republican Party about this case as well. Because they don't want this any more than the leftist Democrats do. So thank you very much, Pastor, for this time. Alrighty, so this is Decent We The People News. Um, just kind of keep this uh, thing in mind, not really by Roe versus Wade, but the 14th Amendment in general. Uh, there's a lot more in the backseat of all this. But what is truth is still truth. Okay? Never, never, never just look straight forward. Always look around you. Alright? To better protect your family by any means necessary. This is Diesel with People News. Till next time. Bye, y'all.